Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel, and this is Scott. So in my last video, I talked about a product called PSI Transfer, and in this video, I'm going to talk about another product that does something just about the same called U-Transfer. So U-Transfer is also a simple self-hosted file transfer and sharing solution. U-Transfer is a replacement also for paid services like Dropbox and WeTransfer, but you remain in control of your data since it's locally hosted. U-Transfer is kind of an old project. It's seven years old, but I really like the way that it works and the way it's implemented, and you'll see why. U-Transfer allows you to transfer large files also, just like PSI Transfer, greater than five gigabytes. And in this video, we're going to learn how to install and configure your own version of U-Transfer in Docker. So here I have a self-hosted instance of U-Transfer, and I've got it hosted at testing.scottabyte.com. So I'm using uh, my Nginx Reverse Proxy Manager to host this. And this product works very simply. You take a file and you drop it on there just like we did with the uh, PSI transfer. And then you can specify an email. So I can email it to myself and you can put a message. This is a message. And then you can send it. When the user receives the email, it looks something like this. And all I have to do is click on the link to download the file. So if you watch my video on PSI transfer, this is going to be very similar to that. First of all, you want to have your host where you have Docker installed. This host can be a VM, it can be a bare metal machine, or it can be a LexD container. And so you're going to do this curl command in order to install Docker, which we're going to have in the show notes. And then the next command you want to do is add yourself to the Docker group. And the command to do that is this. And then you want to be able to do a new group Docker which updates your groups that you have without having to log off and log back in. Then we do the groups command and we can see which groups I'm in. And then finally, we want to do a sudo apt install docker dash compose. If we can spell <laughs> docker compose. and I have Docker Compose already installed. Now that we have Docker installed, I'm gonna do a make dir on uTransfer, cd into uTransfer, and then nano on docker dash compose dot yaml. So the Docker Compose file is uh, really pretty simple this time. Uh, I have a couple of additions over the one that's uh, online listed on the site. So in this particular case, we're going to create a container called uTransfer. I'm exposing it at port 5000. It uses port 5000 within the container, so you can't change the port number to the right of the colon. And then they tell you that there are basically three folders that you need to expose. One is for the configuration, one is for your file uploads, and then the last one is one that I discovered, and that is uh, an assets folder. And this particular assets folder is what allows you to change your background picture. So you notice I had a background picture of my rack, and that's one really nice thing that you can do with this product. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And all we do to fire it up is a docker-compose up-d to detach. And it'll go pull a container and start it.
Now that uTransfer is installed, we're going to go to 192.168.80.196 port 5000 and it brings up this screen. So that's what uh, that's what it looks like when it's freshly installed. You get a warning up here saying the base URL is set to localhost colon 5000, but you're accessing this page from 192.168.198.5000. Uh, it's recommended to update the configuration setting. So in the lower right hand corner is the settings, or you can go up here and click the settings. And when you click the settings, you can change the title of your site. So you can say something like my great site. You can change the tagline. So you can say uh, uh, super self-hosted software RS. And then uh, you can go down here and change this address, which we're actually going to change this to https colon slash slash testing dot scottabyte dot com because I've already made an nginx proxy entry for this. Then under the transfer section you can change your max file size. So right now it's two gigs. I'm going to set it to say uh, eight gigs and then email you're going to set it up appropriately. So if you have regular SMTP mail, you can go ahead and set up the sender, the subject, uh, service, all that sort of thing. Um, and you can you can have some choices here. So this product's a little bit newer than uh, PSI transfer, so it's got more options. And then under storage, uh, local file system really well. We mapped local file system over to... Um, over to our folder that we created or that the Docker Compose created. And there's also an option to map it over to Amazon S3. And then you can specify the retention period in weeks, uh, seconds, months, years, just about everything you want. And uh, then you can provide an encryption key. So you can put a bunch of stuff in here. It doesn't really matter what you put in here. And you can say enable file encryption and then everything even on your system will be encrypted uh, and you also have the option to put uh, templates in here. So um, there's an email template. You can change what's on the email that the end user receives. Uh, you can go edit this. So once you're done with all of these things, uh, we uh, came up here and we save the U transfer. We save the, put it back at 8,000. Save this screen. The email we haven't done anything with, so I'm not going to do that right here, but you get the idea. And then you can click Finalize. So when you click Finalize, you're going to end up giving it some kind of a, uh, a code. So that is a, um, <clears throat> the code that you put in here is an unlock code. And you say, I'm ready for lockdown. You say yes. And then what happens is that it, uh, the settings disappears from the lower right of the screen. Now, the error message we see across the top about the base URL. Now, if we go to testing.scottabyte.com, uh, we should not see that message anymore. And I think the reason we do is because I didn't change that. So, uh, okay, let's go back up here again and let's say testing.scottabyte.com slash unlock. And then let's type in our unlock code, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go down to settings. Let's go check our URL and sure enough, it's not updated. So we want to say HTTPS colon slash slash testing dot scottabyte dot com. And then uh, enable the download feature and click save. So now I'll click finalize and I'll put in the one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm ready for lockdown. There's no settings here. There's also no error message on the top of the screen. So one other thing I want to show you is if you do an LS at your U transfer screen here, 
you'll recall the assets folder. So if you CD into assets, and if you uh, put a file in there named 204 capital H dot JPEG, that folder or that file will become a background wallpaper for your U transfer screen. So in this particular case, we go back to testing.scottabike.com and you can see that I've got Brian's awesome open source splash screen in the background that he uses during his intros. So you can make that basically anything that you want to make it. So in summary, uTransfer can transfer files to other users much larger than are supported in email. uTransfer uses an SMTP server of your own choosing to send emails letting the recipient know that a file is ready to download. And if you offer uTransfer over Nginx reverse proxy, it can perform SSL encryption. This product is a helpful addition to your home lab. uTransfer is designed to be a simple web-based files portal. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and we'll see you next time.